two-tone Wimbledon dial. Do you like the Wimbledon dials? I gotta be honest, I can't see it. I can't see the attraction. Look at those fat lugs. This is a two-tone ceramic bluesy. Right there, a precious metal Daytona on a rubber strap. And this is a Patek Philippe. This is a pilot's watch, pretty large watch, and it's got a uh, second time zone on it. And here's some dials. Check this out. A couple of vintage Explore 1016 dials on the right. That's a Daytona dial. Right there, that's a Cartier Explore 1016 dial. It's another Cartier. And that's a GMT Master dial to the right. An Explore 1016 Tiffany dial. A Cartier dial to the right of that. Another Explore dial. Ah, oh, did I mention? These are all fake. The shop confirmed it. Well, to quote Matt Stevens, <laughs> cannot trust anything anymore. A couple of sub bezels without their pips. No clue as to their authenticity. But this Patek is for sure real. And this one is too. Both beautiful, both very expensive. And I actually uh, tried on the Pilot's watch, the Pilot's Patek. And a little too big and quite a bit too expensive, but a beautiful piece nonetheless. A couple of GMTs, a two-tone on the right, on the left, an all-steel Pepsi. There are no gold surrounds on the indices, so that's probably a 16750. And there's the predecessor to my Explorer 2. That's an Explorer 2 1655. Acrylic crystal riveted bracelet, four lines instead of two. This looks like a 5512 no date sub, beautiful patina, ghosted bezel. This is a little bit too big. But so you like the 40 millimeter? Yeah. What do you think? I think it looks awesome. I think it's amazing how two millimeters can make such a difference. They both look great on map, but I gotta say, I think the GMT Master 2 is perfection but I'm a bit biased I just uh, I could kill Don for selling his well you didn't think he was you didn't think he was no. uh, for real no because he always jokes I'm gonna sell this I'm gonna sell that so for, for actually to have him go through with it that's crazy so it's watch box car a bit of backstory so Don Haynes had this watch mentioned to Matt he was thinking of selling it Matt thought he wasn't serious. Next thing Matt knows, Don has sold it to Clive for something like seven to 8,000 USD, which is an insanely low price. Now, Clive went on to sell it to another guy, but that was before they discontinued it. So the real winner was the guy that wound up with it after Clive. All right, and these are just various watches laid out, and you could just go up and take a look at them, and you've got Pateks up here, you've got... Uh, IWC is up here. You've got some Tudors up here, some Rolexes. There's an Air King, 34 millimeters. It has a leaf hands. So very interesting. Uh, they just have the watches laying all over the place. And, you know, um, I don't really know what to say about it. Uh, this is a 36 millimeter Tudor. I tell you, if, it, if that was a 40 millimeter Tudor, I think it would be behind glass. I think this is another 36 millimeter Tudor. Those vintage Tudor subs are pretty collectible, but at the 36 millimeter size, not so much. Uh, this looks like a, probably a 34 millimeter Oyster Date. And these were more or less around $2,000 for 34 millimeter uh, Rolex. And the whole time I just kept thinking, how easy it would be just to do a sleight of hand deal and, and walk out with one of those head only watches. Of course, if you get caught in Thailand, they'll probably beat the hell out of you and you'll spend, uh, well, a couple years in the clink, you know, not really worth a $2,000 watch. And, uh, Hey, you don't want to lift a watch anyway, but I just remember thinking how easy it would be. Now the numbers on the case of this watch are kind of hard to see. And, you know, um, is everything legit? 
Maybe, maybe not. Are there aftermarket parts in it? Maybe, maybe not. You know, there are a lot of unanswered questions about these watches, but the fact that they're out mm, uh, gave me pause. But yeah, I mean, this Air King's probably about two grand. 34 millimeter head only Oyster Perpetual date. And this is probably a gold plated watch. It looks like the date is pretty thick. That could be repainted. As far as the originality of these pieces go, if it were to stop running, do I think the owner would hesitate putting a third party piece in it to keep it running to get it going? Absolutely not. When it comes to the pieces behind glass, I think you're probably safer. An interesting, very retro looking Omega Constellation. So check out the shape on it. I mean, that's a 12 sided rhombus. Between the hour markers, those are actually straight lines. So. Uh, it looks kind of circular, looks kind of weird. Not sure if I'm a fan of it. Dauphine hands. Now right here, I thought I was looking at an Omega Railmaster, but take a look, that appears to say Rail Hero. Is there such thing as a Rail Hero? Let me know, guys. They have all of these set out, and the method could just be there's no empty space. So the second space opens up, I think the guy watching things knows there's a watch missing this is a long jeans that looks like a grandfather watch a lot of grandfather watches here now this is a probably a 34 millimeter oyster of some sort like the sub dial as far as the hands go hour minute hands those can't be original i really should have asked the guy if they were to see what he said but uh i in a way kind of like the hands but it doesn't really fit with the sort of sportiness of, of an oyster case Who knows, maybe they are original. Ah, they can't be. Well, let me know what you think. I'm pretty sure they're not, but but, uh, but I don't know for sure. All right, and this was a huge watch. And it was just so interesting to see this huge balance wheel going back and forth. It can't be an accurate watch, but but kind of cool because you can see the inner workings. And I was looking at, I think this was the black dialed Air King and the guy just twisted off the back. So there you go, there's the movement. And everything looks legit, but you know, are there third party parts in there? Possibly. But it looks like a Rolex. It probably mostly is a Rolex and you know, at two grand and I'm sure that's negotiable. That could get a Rolex on your wrist. Now, this is a small Patek and pretty good looking. I want to say this was maybe 32 millimeters, 33. The Pateks that they did have were small. And I want to say around 8,000 USD. Not quite sure the price of this one, but The one that you see next was, I remember, 8,000 USD. And, yep, yeah, uh, no seconds, just hour hand, minute hand. Looks like a small sort of vintage dress watch. And if you look closely, you can see that this is a Sigma dial they have down on either side of the Swiss at the six, the, the Sigma uh, symbol and that that uh, is something they started during the quartz revolution to say hey you know this is a this is a precious metal swiss watch it's not one of these uh you know quartz pieces of garbage never heard of this brand but it's a pretty smart looking watch again it's a grandfather's watch but i like the texture around the the hour markers This is a black dialed version of what I was wearing, Explorer 2 16570. And this was an F serial, so solid in links, no holes case, Luminova, Super Luminova. And everything looks legit with his watch, but something sort of jumped out and, and I thought was weird. And that's look up at the top around the 22, uh, between the case and the lugs and, and the bracelet you can see it looks like rust there 
rust or dirt, but something needs to be done about that. If it's rust, that's weird. If it's just dirty, then they really should clean it. So, but I can't imagine finding rust on, on a Rolex. That's very odd. Looks like it's unpolished or at least, yeah, it looks pretty unpolished to me. Now this came with papers, no box, and they had two Explorer 2 black dials, and I think one was on reserve and the other was was for sale still. And I think this might have been the one that was uh, still for sale. Now in the same shop they had uh, some of these 34, 36 millimeter older oyster perpetuals and, and oyster dates. And I vacillate as to whether I like these watches and I've considered getting you know, an old 34 millimeter oyster, but I just don't see getting a lot of wrist time. I think I'm probably better off getting something like a more contemporary date just. But even that, I don't think after the novelty wears off, I would I would really wear it over my my sports Rolexes, my professional model Rolexes, which I just like more. I just like the functions more, I just like the aesthetics more. But I'm somewhat drawn to these pieces. All right, and this is a pre-ceramic bluesy and a Daytona, of course. And you can see these pieces do come with papers. I think that's what we were just looking at with the rust or whatever that was. A couple of two-tone Daytonas. Diamond dial on that white Daytona there. And I think this was the other um, the other Explorer 2 black dial. Both F serials. And checking out the pre ceramic bluesy. You know, have I thought about getting a, a pre ceramic bluesy? Well, I love the dial. I love the the colors of the dial. But as far as a two tone goes, hmm, what do you guys think? What does Matt think? <laughs> it's not you. It's not? No. Now that I know you personally, uh huh. No. That is not you. Steel is the, the right choice? Yep. You can pull off a white gold. Yeah, but that's like pulling off steel. <laughs> There's a Submariner 16610LV, aka the Kermit, with the black dial and green pre ceramic bezel. There's a GMT BLNR, discontinued on the oyster bracelet. Some gold Rolexes, some other kind of Rolexes. Here's a Submariner Hulk with its green ceramic bezel. And this is what I think was the best thing in the shop. This is a 14060M. And I prefer the two-line subs to the four-line subs, but what made this sub special was it had a laser-engraved rehalt, which uh, marks it as a, a later, sort of last version of the, the pre-ceramic subs. You can see the laser-engraved rehalt here. And... The person selling it certainly thought he had something special because the price was something like twelve to 13000 USD. And I think it comes with papers, but I didn't see a box. But even with a box, this is a sort of a high price for this piece. But a lot of people would say it's kind of collectible. And in 10 or 20 years, I'm pretty sure you could sell it and at least make your money back. If not, make a buck on it. And... It's minty. It looks to be pretty perfect. I mean, new old stock quality. And I was looking at the lugs and it appears to be unpolished. So, you know, it's pricey, but I don't think you could find a better 14060M. I think the other one looks better. I mean, I'm a pretty serious guy. The only reason I like these is because you can't get them anymore. It has this sort of, you know, air of... Uh, Exclusivity? Exactly. <laughs>
that pretty much sums up my feelings on the contemporary ceramic models. It's more the exclusivity and the soap opera surrounding it that really captures my interest more than anything. It's a head-only GMT Pepsi. Looks to be 1675, 16750 maybe. No gold surrounds on the indices, matte dial. Here's a day date with a diamond dial. Another day date with a kind of an interesting maroon dial color. Looks like the day and the date is having some issues though. And this is a GMT Master II. Now I'm not sure if this is aftermarket or if, if it came out of Rolex like that, but it's pretty gaudy. Another blue day date diamond dial. This is a Platona, Platinum Daytona. And this is a Patek pocket watch with papers and kind of an interesting story. You can pause it and read it if you read French. Another Submariner Kermit, you can see it has the maxi dial and no engraving on the Rehaut, so this is an earlier version. It's not a Fat Four. Here's a GMT Master II Pepsi. Looks like solid in links. So post-2002. These are all modern watches. You've got a Batgirl right there. And modern ceramic Pepsi on the Jubilee bracelet right there. And in the back you've got a Hulk, a couple of Daytonas back there. And this is a ceramic date sub. This is a GMT Master II. Now, according to the guy behind the counter, this is factory original, so Rolex actually sanctioned this monstrosity. This looks like it has a sapphire crystal, so I'm thinking of 5514. This is a Hulk, of course. It's really the vintage pieces that are more interesting. I really should have focused on those. This is just a ceramic date sub. And... Uh, BLNR on the oyster bracelet. These are known as Rolex coffins, and when Rolex ships their watches to ADs, they do the watch and the box separately, and the watches come in these, and they're known as Rolex coffins. And so, to see a coffin at all is kind of a, a weird thing, and and sort of it hints that perhaps these watches went out the back door of an AD. Coffins are not something that customers are ever supposed to see. And so to see one is kind of a cool thing. And this shop must have connections because this is how Pateks are shipped. This would be like a Patek coffin. Always reminds me of something you'd get at Walmart. couple of Pateks, a reverso looking Patek on the left and sort of a vintage looking Patek right there on the right. And some more parts. Now is this an original Kermit part? Is that an original sub bezel? I couldn't tell you. But they were priced like they were originals. So met up with Matt. He got his clothes. We checked out some watches. So what do you think? What are your impressions? Um, there's some really great stuff here, but it's all a little overpriced. Yeah, and as far as some of the vintage pieces, I mean, this is Bangkok, and I would be really... Leery? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be really leery, to say the least. Yes. But, you know, I mean, you can get, like, an old vintage Air King for under two grand, but is it 100% on the up and up? I don't know. Don't know. Yeah. And what was the best thing you saw? Um... You know what? Probably the old vintage uh, Omega uh, Speedy. It's very 70s retro. Which I didn't get any footage of, so. Yeah, sorry guys. Um, now, you also saw some all black GMTs, uh, yeah. ceramic on Bunch. the oyster. Yeah, and you know, we saw one for like 16, we saw another for 
around 13, so. Yeah, there was one black, black, black that was about 12.5. And seeing them in the coffins, you know, how they are shipped to Rolex. Oh, yeah. I mean, the public is never supposed to see that, but it's pretty amazing to see a. Yeah, all four of them lined yeah. up there. It's like, oh, well, they ne never even touched the hands of anyone outside of dealer going to gray market. No, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that there's just some backroom deals going on. I don't know. Yes. I, so, I mean, I guess it's possible those uh, coffins are, you know, coffins from China. They're not straight up Rolex coffins. I guess, I guess. But I'm doubting. I think yeah. it's the real deal. No, I think and it's the you real notice deal. they were saying no photo serial, no photo serial. They don't want us to get the serial numbers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's fun, though. It's All been right. interesting. Well, let me know what you guys like. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace. I'll leave you with this day date. And when it comes to diamond dials, this is an awesome diamond dial. Those are baguettes. Every single hour marker is a baguette, not those square diamonds. I'm not one for day dates, but if you need a diamond dial, the baguettes are the way to go because they actually look like a stick dial, but they're not. Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin. And I'm lost in Bangkok. I've lost Matt. And I'm alone in the street. I've uh, got a coconut drink to sustain myself, but I'm, uh, I'm a lost man wandering aimlessly in Bangkok. Uh, the mean streets of Bangkok with nothing but my GMT to acclimate me to the time. Oh, oh, he's Cheers. back. Okay, I'm saved. Yeah, exactly. Welcome to Bangkok Symposium. I'm Austin. I'm Matt Stevens. And we're your hosts for this tuk-tuk adventure. We're only drinking uh, water. That's right. And um, yeah, I mean, basically this is a documentary on um, riding a tuk-tuk and riding a tuk-tuk. Yeah, riding a tuk-tuk. Uh, That's pretty been, much yeah. all I've got to say about it. Yeah, we, so, uh, yeah, we looked at watches all day and now we're just having fun uh, getting driven around Bangkok. By Tuk Tuk. Exactly. Thanks for uh, tuning into Tuk Tuk Symposium. Uh, <laughs> check out our next episode when we write another Tuk Tuk. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Welcome to Bangkok Fried Chicken Symposium. I'm Austin. And today we try some Bangkok Fried Chicken. It's crispy, it's salty, it's meaty, and it's a little bit better than KFC. Thank you for stopping by Bangkok Fried Chicken Symposium. Let me know what you think about fried chicken. See you next time on Bangkok Fried Chicken Symposium. I'm Austin. Good night. <laughs>